Hello, my name is Francisco Teixeira Barbosa and I am the content manager at connectyoursmite.com. Today we are going to talk about surfaces. I know what you are thinking that is a boring topic, but I'm going to try only to, to make some takeaways to you just to understand this topic that I wrote about more or less 15 days ago. You can read the old article and connect your smile on our blog, but I'm going to show in some in short what are the, the, the takeaways about this topic. So first of all, I, I asked it on my Twitter poll. I did a poll where, where I asked people what they think about the surface, what would be the ideal surface. And they, they answered, the 60% of them answered that they would like moderately rough surface which is great this is the right answer okay 60% of people said that okay and the other thing is that if you have um, I am a dental office and there are a lot of sales representatives that came to my office and they always say the same speech we are launching a new implant we have a, a new surface that it was developed by a scaped engineer that escaped from Stramon and he developed the same surface, the SELA surface to us. So everyone wants to, 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 to have that kind of surface that we know that is the more, the, 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 the surface that, that has more evidence-based surface in the market. But the thing is that they, uh, why these sales representatives say they have the SELA surface? They always are telling me that the, the, the engineers escape from Stroman. I'm wondering if Stroman is like a jail where, where engineers have to escape from, from it. Okay, but let's move on. Why? Why, 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 why a good surface? What, what are the properties of a good surface? I would like to start with, with the classification from Weinberg in the year 2004. And in this classification, she, she divided in four kinds of surface. The first one would be the Turner, Turner surface that was the origin of Randemark, that which the value, the SA value, is below 0 0.5 microns. Okay. This is, a, this is the value for the turned surface. There are not other surfaces that are the smooth surface. They, are, they have an SCA bailer between 0 0.5 and 1. At this point, I would like to, 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 to tell you what is the SCA value. The SCA value uh, is a three-dimensional uh, way to measure the topography of an implant surface. So when we this is this will be our reference to choose an implant system and and to to know what we can do with that implant system. Okay? The other are the moderately rough surfaces that are between U1 and 2 microns. Okay, and then, then we, we are going to talk a lot about this one today. And there is another surface that are the very, very rough surfaces. That are, have an uh, SCA value more than two microns. Okay. In the market, uh, most of the, of the brands, they have an SEO value that is in these conditions, that is in this range between U1 and 2 microns. And what is great about this one? Okay, let's see. For example, uh, Stroman, more or less, it has an e Stroman SLA, it has a 1.8 SA, Tionite uh, from Novel, has um, well, like 
And there is a surface that I use in my system that is the uh, Up and Blast from FIBO. They ha it has 1.3. Okay. This is some examples. Of course, there, there are more values. Uh, every surface has is, uh, its uh, SCA value. The thing is that if you have these values between this, if you have a moderatory red surface, you know that the biological behavior of your implant will be optimal. Okay, so in this case, you know that uh, the pattern of the healing will be uh, predictable. And you, for example, you have to check which is your SEA value for the implant system that you are using because in some systems maybe they are not they are in this range they are the smooth surfaces and you are not able to do for example an early loading okay now do you know that is something that it, you can do with only some systems they have to be scientific validated for example the SCLA surfaces it is validated for the early loading a BAM blast from FIBO also is, a, is also uh, validated from a scientific point of view. And of course, this is the, the thing that you have because there is something that we call the danger zone. The danger zone, let me just remove some, some of these things. There is something when you place the implant, there will be a primary stability. For example, I went to check, primary stability is here. So your implant, is, the stiffness is high, but this stability is somehow decreasing, this mechanical stability, and will be substituted by the biological the biological integration, what we call the osseointegration. integration. This curve and this behavior is different and is dependent on your surface. If your surface is a turner surface, for example, you know that this time span will be much more longer and you have to wait much more time to load your implant. Okay, this also depends on the type of bone that you are uh, working in. Because there is another research from uh, Barwell in 2003 that he says something like this. Okay, you have an implant and you place an implant in a bone type 1. You place every implant in a bone type 2 or 3. And you place an implant in bone type 4. Okay. The ESQ, that is the value that we, we can obtain from the OSTEL uh, that tells us the stability of the implant and the resistance of the implant to the micro movement, the curve will be different from type 1, type 2, it will decrease more, and type 4, they decrease more. So the harder the bone, the less the ESQ is going to be decreasing. Okay? So this is something that we have to, uh, to be sure and to know about our implant system because it's normal when we have, we place an implant, when we place an implant, we can have an ESQ of, for example, 78, and we measure the ESQ three weeks later. That we know from the study from Berglund and Amerson 2003, 2004, Three, three weeks later, we will have, maybe, for example, it will decrease to 58. It will be a huge jump. Eh? It, it doesn't go like this, but it is an example. But we wait a little bit more, four weeks, and we see that, that this ESQ value is going to rise again, and it's going to come back to their original values. So um, we have to know which surface we are working with, we have to know the SCA value, 
and if it is validated for early loading. And just to uh, finish this short communication, I would like to also to talk about some surfaces that are anodized and we are seeing some problems in long term, some kind of pair implantitis, implantitis so uh, we have to be aware of some long term problems in some surface. But this is another topic that we will talk other day. Today, I just wanted to show you a short list of or the best takeaways of the article that I wrote for Connect Your Smile. I hope it is helpful and see you next time.